Red Level and Dell Technologies. Helping smart businesses in Metro Detroit stay ahead of the competition with hybrid cloud solutions engineered to save time, lower risk, and support future growth. Rethink business, rethink IT. I'm very glad to be here. And I want to just take this opportunity to do a couple of things. And one thing I want to do is give you an update on a subject they asked me to talk about, and that's the ongoing saga of Detroit's rape kits that were discovered back in 2009, all 11,341 of them. And I want to spend most of, my, most of my time talking today about how the business community and how our public-private partnership has led to our great success today in enabling us to start and continue and go on on a project that we think is going to take about another three to five years. As most of you know, I hope, uh, back in August of 2009, 11,341 untested rape kits were discovered in an annex to the Detroit Police Department property room. And I had been around for a long time as an assistant prosecutor, as a judge, and I didn't know this annex existed, but that's where they were found. And just to give you an idea, I thought at the time when I was told about this, it was discovered by someone in my office during an audit that was being done by the Michigan State Police after the Michigan State Police took over the Detroit uh, crime lab, and they wanted to see what they had. And I thought, I was told by one of my assistants who discovered it, that there were about 10,000 of them. And it was just an estimation, and I thought, here is another issue in Detroit that's unique to Detroit. And it wasn't until I went home and started doing some research, I discovered that this was a global and a certain national issue. In fact, there are estimated to be about 400,000 untested rape kits across this country. Now, all of you are familiar in this area with the greatest institution of higher learning in the world, the University of Michigan, and how they, go blue, how they have the largest football stadium, private college or NFL in the country. And if you think about each one of those rape kids having a victim attached, a survivor attached, we know that the big house holds a over 100,000 people, and the number of estimated, and I think it's conservative, untested rape kits across this country can fill up the big house four times. So with that visual, it kind of gives you an idea of what a huge problem this has been. And fortunately, over the years, we've been, we've been working on this, and we, didn't, we started from nothing, but I want to spend time really not really talking about that, and we've got a nice plan going so that now Detroit and how we handle its rape kits are a national model. Just since ours were discovered in 2009, there's been dozens and dozens of major American cities and smaller cities across this country that have discovered them. We started off with no money. Um, it, at the time, it was costing anywhere from $12,000 to $15,000 a year to test one rape kit. That has changed now, in part due to the work of the group that we've been working with. We started off very early on not only receiving just money from the federal government, but also from the generosity of Detroit businessmen and women. Our largest benefactor to date has been Gretchen Belate of Carhartt, who pledged to us for five years $100,000, so a half a million dollars. And I just picked up my third check from her, and for, because of the, her generosity and the generosity of many, many Detroit businessmen and women, we, we were able to get started when we had no money. We started getting money from other sources, and again, from the federal government, we received the bulk of our money probably so far. Then from the state, about three weeks, three years into the project, we received $4 million from the state to test 8,000 kits. And prior to that, there had been already 2,000 tested through the, the money from the federal government. And about a year and a half ago, just after Warren Evans was elected, he pledged and we received, it was voted on and passed by the commission a million dollars from the county of Wayne for this project. So we've received money state, federal, and local for this project now, and I'm very happy about that, as well as through the generosity of people throughout this world, literally, we received donations from all 50 states and nine to 10 foreign countries across this world for this project in one city in one county, in one state in Michigan. Now, in January of 2015, we formed a partnership with the Michigan Women's Foundation, with the great Peg Talat and Carolyn Casson, of course, 
and with Andy Arena's organization, the Detroit Crime Commission, and my office to form enough said. As a little backdrop to that, I had been begging everybody I could find for, fund for funding for this project before we really got going. I talked to all of the, all, I think most, most of the nonprofits in, in town, and they were told this was a very intriguing idea. We really want to help, but we're not able to because of our structure. And finally, the, the wonderful David Egner, he convened a group of people at, on the porch at Mackinac, at the policy conference a few years back. And they agreed to fund the Michigan Women's Foundation to help us in our effort to fundraise. Enough Said was born, Enough Sexual Assault in Detroit, and we've been going full strong for, like I said, just almost two years now, well, over two years now. I want to tell you about some of the work that's been done. We have done either from campaign-style house parties from all over the southeastern Michigan, not just in Detroit, but many of our suburb, suburban friends have helped us with house parties to raise money. We have been to Washington. Uh, Peg Tallett, Karen Cass, and I went to Washington because part of our project was not only did we want to raise money from the private, from the, from the private sector, but we also want to leverage the partnership to be able to get more money from the, from the government, from the federal government, and the state government, and the county government. So we traveled to Washington, met with our representatives, met with Congressman Conyers, um, Congresswoman Lawrence and Dingell, um, De Senator Debbie Stabenow, and also Gary Peters. We met with them, and they helped us leverage even more federal dollars. We think when we made this announcement in January of 2015 that this was a first of its kind public-private partnership. It's worked out very, very well. We have, again, like I said, gone from house parties to all kinds of venues, talked to all kinds of people. Many, many people are helping us in many ways, and I want to highlight one of them at this point in time, two actually. One of the things that we decided very early on when I looked at this and in my horror discovered this problem back in 2009, is I don't want to do all this work that we knew we were going to have to do, and then five, ten years down the road find us in the same situation again. So there are three things that we did. We worked very closely with the Detroit Police Department to develop a protocol that from 2009 forward, every kit would go to the lab. Huge. We also worked with Governor Schneider and the, the governor's office and the Michigan legislature, and we finally passed a few years ago the Sexual Assault Submission Act, and it does a few things. And we modeled it on other states. We took which was, what was good for our culture here in Michigan, and we, we passed that law through the help of many, many people. And like I said, the governor signed it. And this causes a couple of things. Whenever there's a sexual assault kit done in Wayne, well, it's statewide. It's not just Detroit. It's statewide. So whenever there's a sexual assault kit done across this state, the local police departments, let's just say for sake of argument, it's, it's Detroit. And the local department, the Detroit Police Department, has to, within 14 days to pick up that kit. They have another 14 days to get that kit to the crime lab. And the crime lab, with one caveat, has 90 days to get that kit tested. And then the Detroit Police Department, in my example, has again, it takes it back after the testing is done and stores it in their facilities. Again, statewide. It happens in Lansing and Ishmaeming and everywhere across the state. This is the law now. So that helps us know that Post that bill being signed, every kit has a time standard that must be followed. So there should not be any kits sitting in, in police departments across the state. One of, our, one of the things that we're very proud of that highlights another type of public-private partnership is our work that we did with UPS, United, United Parcel Service. We said from the very beginning of this effort, and this is a great example how we work with, with businesses large and small, and we have others in our office too, which I'll highlight near the end, is we said that if you can track a package that you should buy from an internet company anywhere in this world, and you can literally go on your computer or your, your device, whatever you're using, and you can see where that package is once it's being sent to you, and you know where it is. So why couldn't we track a rape kit through one state's criminal justice system? So with the help of Dan Gilbert and Quicken, um, we turned to UPS who was very happy to work with us 
funded by them, didn't cost the tax, and still isn't costing the taxpayers not any money. And we have a tracking system that's been in place since uh, February of last year. So every kid, we worked for weeks with UPS, who, when you work in the government, as I have my entire career, we all know it's very different. And within weeks, they had come up with all of these charts and graphs about how they were going to fix this problem. And it was amazing watching them work. But we used their scanners. I'm going to simplify it. We used their scanners, and once a woman is sexually assaulted, and in Wayne County, they go to the wonderful Wayne County uh, forensic nurses, and that kit that's used is scanned. When the Detroit Police Department picks up that kit, it is scanned. When the Detroit Police Department takes it to the lab in Lansing, to the Michigan State Police, it is scanned. When it's picked up after the testing has been completed, it's scanned again. So we know where every kit is since we adopted this protocol. And it was developed with our friends at UPS, basically pro bono. So wonderful, wonderful work done by them. Our, our goal is, and now this has been taken on by, by the state, we want it to be statewide, our goal is to be able to know where every rape kit is at every moment across this country. So these backlogs and these untested kits and these abandoned kits that have happened across the country will be no more. And I have to thank profusely our friends at Quicken and UPS who made that happen. So, the state is now, I'm on the state commission, is now developing a statewide tracking system. It hasn't been done in this country. And so this is the way of the world. And so we're very, very happy to be a part of that project. I also wanted to get back to Enough Said and just talk about one of the offshoots of Enough Said has been a group of 100 black women's organizations. Over 84% of our survivors in this rape kit project were at women of color. Most of them between 16 and 24 years old when they were sexually assaulted. And so we had, led by the wonderful Kim Trent, who was pregnant, uh, who was a uh, not pregnant, oh my goodness, who is president <laughs> of the African American 490. She's going to kill me, because um, I'm sure she'll hear about it. She might even be sitting out there. And we have done wonderful things. Again, this is under the, under the umbrella of the Michigan Women's Foundation and Enough Said. And they've raised all kinds of money. Their goal, I believe, was um, $300,000 plus to raise. I know they're very close to their goal. And with them, they have done the following, and it's been innovative. We had during the, this is 2017, so this must have been 2015, Michigan-Michigan State game. The Michigan alumni and the Michigan State alumni had a contest to see who could raise the most money, and in less than a week we raised $30,000, the rate kid effort. We've had the African-American fraternities and sororities raise money on behalf of their own fraternities and sororities. We've had small business men and women, men and women of all races and creeds, donated their day's receipts, their week's receipts, their month's receipts for this effort. I, the chief before me and myself and some other um, people were celebrity scoopers at Mootown Cafe, and all the tips and donations went to this effort. And there's been spa parties and all kinds of parties that have raised money for this effort. Just a, a lot of people getting for this particular cause. One of the biggest things that happened, and this I had nothing to do with this, was all Kim Trent and African American 490. They heard that Erica Badu was coming into town and got in touch with her people, and she agreed to donate $5 of each of her ticket sales to this project. Found out later that she had been a sexual survivor, sexual assault survivor herself. So we've had help from celebrities, from again, starting off with Detroit businessmen and women, culminating in the efforts that have sprouted out from the Michigan Women's Foundation and the Detroit Crime Commission in my office, Enough Said campaign. And you can always go online to look up Enough Said, and we, we would take donations from anybody. We expect this to be, again, a three- to five-year project. I want to just, in my last few seconds, just update you on our progress so far. We have now... The number of cases being actively investigated are 334. The number of cases awaiting to be investigated, 1,042. 
we are up to 78 convictions. We're very proud about that. And those number of convictions just, number, just represent defendants and not there are many more victims. And perhaps the biggest number is we have identified 784 serial rapists. 784, and over 50 of them have raped 10 to 15 times apiece. Out of time, I want to thank you. So we will continue to update, and I thank you very much for the support that you've given and the support from the Michigan, Michigan Southeastern Michigan, Detroit businessmen and women. Thank you so much. Thank you.